MSNBC's Tremaine Lee traveled to Atlanta as part of an upcoming tour of HBCUs across the South to talk with students about the issues they care about most and which candidates might get their votes in 2022 and 2024. Joining me now to share a bit about what they had to say is Tremaine Lee, MSNBC correspondent and host of the podcast Into America. Tremaine, thank you for, for, for coming back to the back half, the back end of the Sunday show after appearing in the front, in the front end in the special. What was the most surprising thing you learned after talking to those three students this week? I'll tell you what, Jonathan, there were a number of interesting points that these young people made. I think on one hand, it was amazing to see how engaged they actually are and excited about participating in the process and talking to their friends and family about policy issues that matter to them most. Uh, but even though they're on fire in terms of the policy, it was very interesting how kind of lukewarm and tepid they were actually about this administration and the prospect of uh, Joe Biden running for president again. They believe in the Democratic process. They believe that he's done some great work, that he hasn't gotten credit for, but at the same token, they're a little lukewarm. Let's take a listen. Should Joe Biden run for office again? Should he run for a second term? No. Okay. <laughs> no. If it's against Donald Trump, yes. When it comes to voting for president, it's usually the lesser of two evils. And I would like for someone just brand spanking new, preferably younger, because um, I feel like it's a lot of old people in charge. I'm not anti-Joe Biden. No. Right. Joe. No. If, if yeah, it Joe. comes down to oh, it, yeah, Joe. if it comes down to it, I'm not going to sit up there and turn my so nose back. like, no. no. <laughs> like, Joe. I'll vote for him if I have to, but I don't want to. Right. Mm. I'm not going to turn my nose up at him. I don't think that he's like the future solution. I don't think he's the direction that the Democratic Party should go, but I think if that's what's if that's what's required, if he's the man for the moment, then sure. Lesser of two evils. If the Republican Party was to make a genuine good faith appeal to black voters, especially among younger black voters, could they get more? Well, I see your face. I don't think that the past six years of Republican legislature and Republican efforts have been in the advantage of black people or have been with black people in mind. I don't think there is a light switch that can be turned on for the Republican Party that can kind of get all the black people together and come out to vote. I don't see that as being possible. I don't think that the Republicans passed in the past six years of, you know, courting white voters, courting white supremacists, kind of courting that anti-black rhetoric is possible. I don't see Make America Great Again as a pro-black slogan. I do think that if local representatives come with real issues that might be more moderate, it, they could potentially sway the black vote. There's a lot of... Um, black people in this country who are especially older who are moderates. They wouldn't consider themselves Democrats nor Republicans. So I think that if Republicans really came in a moderate way, they could. Should black folks be looking beyond Republican and Democrat for something more, something different? I love the idea of being in a third party and, you know, being in the Green Party or being a single issue voter. but. That's not realistic. We need change now. So we, we don't have time to wait. There's no time to be patient and wait for that third party. There's not enough black people. There's not enough Latino people, people of color, that if we created our own third party, we would get significant representation. So I think we have to kind of vote within our best interest, whether that's, you know, voting blue down the ballot, or maybe there's a Republican local candidate that you can support. Our rights and our freedoms and our protections are at the ballot every year. Right. So I don't think we really have the luxury of, you know, third party voting because our vote is so important. Jonathan, one thing that is clear is that for these young voters, uh, the lesser of two evils is simply just not enough. And so if the Democratic Party especially doesn't recognize and listen to their voices, they can't then later on point the blame for young black folks for not showing up. So hopefully folks are listening, uh, but these young folks, they know what they want and they're here to try to get it. And, you know, in Tremaine, what I found interesting in, in that conversation, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I'm going to disagree with them on the whole lesser of two evils thing, <laughs> lesser of two evils thing. But the thing that jumps out at me the most is how pragmatic they are. They're like, if it's Donald Trump again, Joe Biden should, Joe Biden definitely has to run. They were also making it very clear, even though they would like someone younger, it's not because they don't like Joe Biden. 
That's that's right. There's not this idea of this this young voter who is idealistic and it doesn't matter. You know the, the realities. They want this pie in the sky. They are thinking through these policies, but also yeah. political strategy and who um, can can best go against Donald Trump if that next candidate is Donald Trump. Amazing. Mm -hmm.